Good morning, and welcome to Mass Memorial CME Sunday School, June 26, 2022, and this is Sister Sharon. We're on our summer quarter, Partners in a New Creation. This is the last lesson in Unit 1. Um, unit 1 is God Delivers and Restores. Our lesson is God Offers Deliverance. Our key verse is from Isaiah the 51st chapter, the first verse and it says listen to me you who follow after righteousness you who seek the lord look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug and our lesson scripture is isaiah the 51st chapter verses one through eight so this first unit was all from the book of isaiah and then our second unit which will start next week will be from the gospel of john and so and it'll be lessons from there so we'll have five lessons from the gospel of john and then after that, our third unit, we go into the book of Revelation. But again, this is our last lesson in the book of Isaiah. So let's begin our lesson. So you'll notice um, I split the lesson into three parts. And at the beginning of each part, it says, listen to me. Now, in the King James Version, it says, hearken, okay, which is the same thing. Listen to me. So God is telling them, listen to me, okay. And so... This message, even when you look at those scriptures, is not talking about everyone this time, but it's saying, listen to me, those who follow righteousness, okay? Listen to me, those who seek the Lord. Listen to me, those who are God's people or nation. And listen to me, those who have God's law written on their hearts. So this is who I, the message from Isaiah 51 is speaking to, okay, from verses one through eight. Listen to me, this group of people, and prayerfully, all of us are this group of people that we are following after righteousness, which is right standing with God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus if we have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, that we seek the Lord, that we're seeking him, um, seeking his face and not just his hand, and that we are God's people because we have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and also that God has written his law on our hearts. OK, remember, Jesus came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it. So now it's written on our hearts. So then I have going along with this idea of listen to me, Hebrews 8, chapter the 10th verse. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts or think of hearts that way as well. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So with those laws written on our hearts, then we become God's people, okay? And God is our God. So now let's get into the first part of the lesson. So this part is um, Isaiah the 51st chapter, and it goes verses one through three. And I call this part, forget not your foundation, forget not your foundation. So it says, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord, remember? Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So the first thing that I thought about, reason why I call this forget not your foundation, is telling us, look at from the rock from which you were hewn or the hole from the pit from which you were dug. So in other words, um, take me back, okay? Uh, I thought about that too. Take me back to when I first believed, but don't forget your foundation. Don't forget what you learned from um, those before in the faith. And even in this situation for Zion, don't forget Abraham, don't forget Sarah. And so what came to my mind first was a couple of songs that we sing. Um, and also just from uh, Lion King, I thought about uh, one of my, the lines I love, and they even have a t-shirt that says this, but it says, remember who you are. When the spirit of Mufasa said to his adult Simba um, in Lion King, remember who you are. And so in these verses, it's saying, I know what's come against you. I know you have been in desolation, but God is here to comfort you. And you need to remember who you are and you need to hold on to your faith and what God's gonna do and God's promises. And so that came to the song, Standing on the Promises. And I put verse two here, because I, I think that's what they were going through stuff. Remember, they had been in captivity. And, and now it's that idea of God is able to restore. We talked about restoration the other week. 
God is able to restore and God will restore. And so then just this verse goes, standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God, I shall prevail standing on the promises of God. So it's just that idea that we stand on God's promises, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on in the world, even in their world at the time, it's like, we need to stand on the promises of God. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. So therefore what God says is true and it will happen. So we stand on those promises. And so we need to listen to him when he says, okay, listen to me, hearken unto me and stand on those promises. Remember our foundation. And that also brought up the song, How Firm a Foundation, that's verse one. And it's, how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. So we're on a firm foundation, and we can even say standing um, on, on Christ the solid rock, I stand all other ground is sinking sand. That's another song, but I didn't put that one. But just the idea, we're standing on a firm foundation. And so we, and even in our Christian faith, of those who came before, we can look at the hall of faith, as we call it, and we can look at Hebrews um, chapter 11 and see all so many who came before us in the faith, but even in our own families, those who came before us in the faith, even in our, in the church, even in history, those who came before us in the faith. And so we have a firm foundation and we need to go back and look at the uh, rock from which we were, we came from. We need to go back and look. So we, we, we're a pebble. Okay. We're, we're a little piece of a larger rock or we're a little hole from a larger pit that was dug. And so for them, um, the, the lesson says, go back and think about Abraham and Sarah. And in Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses one through three, it says, now to the Lord, now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So that, that end part, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed, that's us. And that's even, that, that's even Zion in the sense, they're a chip off of this rock. Okay, and this was when God made promises to Abram. He was Abram at the time, and then he changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. And then even later on in Genesis, and this is chapter 15, verse 6, and I don't have it printed for you, but I will read it to you. In Genesis um, chapter 15, verse 6, it says, Abram believed the Lord. He believed him. So God made these promises in Genesis 12, and in Genesis 15, it says, Abram believed the Lord. And he, and that's God, accounted it to Abraham or Abram for righteousness. So he believed God, okay? And so what this lesson is saying, go back and remember that Abraham and Sarah, they believed God. They stood on his promises and the promises came true. So if God says he's going to restore, if God says he's going to comfort in his lesson Zion, he's going to do it or he did do it. And so... Um, that's what he means about Abraham and Sarah. They had promises from God and God kept his promises and we need to go on and hold on to what we know. And then even to read our lesson in the contemporary English, not the whole thing, just the part um, about Abraham, it says, if you want to do right and obey the Lord, follow Abraham's example. He was the rock which you were chipped. God chose Abraham and Sarah to be your ancestors. The Lord blessed Abraham, and from that one man came many descendants. So that's from the contemporary English version of this lesson. Same verses from Isaiah 51. Now, the other thing was mentioned was the idea of Eden. And so with that in mind, remember, they had been in captivity. The Jerusalem had been destroyed. The walls had been torn down, you know, and God's comforting them, telling them that things are going to be restored. And then ultimately at the end, everything will be restored. So we even think all the way to the new heaven and the new earth. But it's the idea that it says Zion 
that even though it looks desolate now, even though it looks like a desert now, it's going to be like Eden. And so Eden is the place or the garden where Adam and Eve lived before the fall. And we can see that in Genesis, the second chapter, verses 8 through 24. And basically, whenever they use the word Eden, even uh, whether it's um, in a regular movie or whatever the situation, Eden is considered a delightful region or abode of paradise. Eden is considered a state of perfect happiness or bliss. And so they're saying, yes, you're desolate now, but you're going to go back to being productive. You're going to go back to being fertile. You're going to go back to being a paradise. You're going to go back to a place of bliss, a place of joy. And it even says that in the lesson. If we go back just a few minutes to that last verse of, or on part of verse three, it says, Joy and gladness will be found in it, thanksgiving and the voice of melody, okay? Because again, they were, they were looking like a wilderness. They were looking like a desert, but God's like, um, I'm going to comfort your waste places. You're looking like a wasteland, but it's going to come back to look like Eden, like the garden, okay? And then it said, and then joy and gladness will be in it and thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So in other words, people will be singing. There'll be joy and um, joy of the Lord is our strength. And then even just a verse that I gave you about joy, because they were going through, you know what I mean? And, and we go through. And, but Psalm, the 30th division of Psalm, verse five says, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And that's what he was telling them. He's telling them, even though I had to chastise you, because remember they had been disobedient and had went into captivity. He's saying, Okay, and things became desolate and like desert and like wilderness, you know, even in their own lives. He said, my favor lasts for a lifetime. I, I was angry, you know, um, but he said, but his favor lasts for a lifetime and they might've been weeping, you know, and this do it for a night. And in other words, for a brief amount of time, for a season, but joy comes in the morning. And so here he's telling them, I'm, he's comforting them. He's telling them, this desert, this wasteland, it's going to go back and look like the Garden of Eden, okay? And you, the joy will be here. The joy will be here. We're now on our second part of our lesson, and I called it Forget Me Not. So we're talking about, you know, we need to remember who God is, okay? So I said, the first part is almost like, remember who you are. And I was like, remember who God is. So forget me not. And this is for verses four through six. And it says, listen to me. There goes that hearken again. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, O my nation. For law will proceed from me, and I will make my justice rest as a light of the peoples. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands will wait upon me, and on my arm they will trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look on the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish away like smoke, the earth will grow old like a garment, and those who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will not be abolished. Okay, so forget me not, and that me is talking about God. Don't forget, we don't want to forget God. And so he's already, he's calling us again to listen to his people, listen to his nation, and he's saying um, the law proceeds from him, justice comes from him. And that justice becomes a light to the peoples. And then the thing that I noticed was it says, my righteousness, my salvation, um, when I was reading this. And um, the scripture that came to me, several scriptures came to me. First, Matthew 24, chapter the 35th verse, because it talks about at the end of these verses um, in Isaiah verse 6 about um, looking at what happens to the heavens and the earth. And it looks like it vanishes away like smoke and the earth grows old like a garment. Matthew 24, the 24th chapter, excuse me, the 35th verse says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And Jesus actually did say that, put it in red. Jesus actually said that. And so the word is not going to pass away. Jesus is the living word, but the word of God will not pass away. Again, God keeps his promises. God does what he says he's going to do. And so heaven and earth will pass away, this old heaven, this old earth. And we know and we'll probably study that when we get to the book of Revelation, that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. But he said, this heaven and this earth are going to pass away, but his words won't pass away. What God says he'll do, he'll do. Okay. And so then it's also just this idea that he said, 
in verse four, where he says, um, and I would make my justice rest as a light of the peoples. So again, it's this idea that came to me. I'm like, my justice, my righteousness, my salvation. And what came to me? That's Jesus. Jesus was his justice, his righteousness, his salvation. So that goes into Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses two through three and six through seven, really is the whole chapter, but I just wanted to give you an excerpt from it because here goes this idea. It says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Remember how it just said, my, my justice shall rest on you like light? Okay. So it says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. Then jumping to verse six, and we quote this all the time at Christmas time, but for, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Who is that? Jesus Christ. See that people walking in the darkness have seen a great light? Jesus, the light of the world. And then verse seven says, of the greatness of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. See, God said, my justice, my righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So when we look at this part of the lesson, we need to remember God and we need to remember Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. So in other words, first remember who you are. Remember where I brought you from. Then it's remember me that, I'm, that he's not, remember God in the sense that he's not a man. Again, he's not a man that he can lie. So justice will come from him. Okay, righteousness, right standing with him is near. Salvation has gone forth, okay? And he will judge, you know, the people. Like I said, heaven and earth will pass away, but his words won't pass away. His salvation is forever. His righteousness is forever. Will not be abolished to say it exactly as the scripture says. But Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus will bring brings justice. He's wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. Okay. The government is on his shoulders. Amen. Now we're to the last part of our lesson, which I call fear not. And this is verse seven and eight. It says, listen to me or hearken you who know righteousness, you people in whose heart is my law. Do not fear the reproach of men nor be afraid of their insults. For the moth will eat them up like a garment and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. So I call this fear not. Second Timothy 1, 7 tells us, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, everyone, we need to have reverential fear of God. Okay, um, God loves us but we need to remember that he's God. So we're not talking about that type of fear. We're talking about fear where we're afraid of people or we're afraid of things and we won't work in the power of God or in the love of God, okay? Or it causes confusion in our mind, okay? And so it's the idea that God doesn't give us that type of spirit. You know, all through the Bible, you'll see fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. And so that's what I call this part, fear not. It also says in Matthew 10, 28, and it's a deep verse, but it's true. It says, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So a lot of times we're worried about people who can hurt us physically, or even they can, um, you know, how we used to say sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt us, but names can hurt us you know, and um, people can, there's words I really don't like. Um, I think they're harsh words. I think they're mean words, um, um, like the word idiot. I don't like that word. I, I, I think that's a, you know what I mean? Um, that's a harsh word and that can, that can hurt somebody, okay? It can hurt. And, um, and so 
we need to be, I think we need to be mindful about, you know, we used to sing this on be careful, um, little eyes what you see, or be careful, little ears what you hear, but um, also be careful, um, little mouth what you say. And that's a whole lot on the Bible about what we say. But it's the idea that um, we don't have to fear because of that. Um, we need to be mindful that we're to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, because the Lord ultimately has the power to destroy both soul and body. Okay. Um, the enemy can't. Okay. Um, it's our choice. We have free will. But it's the idea that um, we want to be careful. We want to use wisdom. We want to be safe. Okay. So we're not saying go do any old thing. So that's not, so you'll put yourself in a dangerous situation, but we've seen even in the world, sometimes people aren't in a dangerous situation. They're in the grocery store, they're at school, you know, and unfortunately um, they've, they've been killed. Okay. But it's the idea that what, what does your soul look like? Are you saved? Okay. Are you saved? And so in the lesson, his, he says, you know, basically, do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their insults. And then going even a little bit further um, with the, just still on this idea, Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2 says, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob. And when he says, O Jacob, he's talking about the nation of Israel again, or God's people. He says, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. And that's what we need to remember. We belong to God. And I always, I, I do say, and God knows I say, I say, God, thank you for taking such very good care of me. Um, I belong to God. Okay. And so he says, you're mine. And so even my older sister and I, we were talking about sometimes people do something against you. And it's just like, you're not really doing something against me. Yes. But you got to deal with my father. You got to deal with Abba. You got to deal with God because God loves me and God protects me and God takes care of me. And even how we talk about vengeance is his and he and he does repay, you know. And then, so it's the idea that but I belong to God, you know, prayerfully you belong to God. And it says when you pass through the waters, OK, I will be with you and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. So it's not saying that we don't go through, okay? But the key word in this verse is through. We don't stay in. We all have seasons of grief. We have seasons of um, trouble. We have seasons of despair. But it's the idea that, um, you know, we say in Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For the reason why is God is with us. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. And so this idea is no matter what folks are saying, okay, we belong to God and we don't need to fear, we don't need to fear them. We need to have reverential fear for God and we need to also have faith in God because he's redeemed us and he's got us. Jeremiah, the first chapter, the eighth verse says, do not be afraid of their faces for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. So this was when Jeremiah was called to be a prophet and Jeremiah was young and he kept saying, I'm a youth. So if you read the first part of Jeremiah, the first chapter, he's saying, Lord, I'm a youth and, and, and they might not even believe, believe me. And sometimes we think that we can only be um, taught somebody by people who look a certain way. You know, people of our same status, people of our same education or people who we look up to because maybe they have more education than we do. But God can use whoever he wants to get the message across, even a child. So don't. So sometimes when you hear that message and it cuts, OK, um, and it's coming from a child, it's still the word from the Lord. OK, but, but he was telling um, Jeremiah, I'm going to give you words to speak. And you go ahead and speak and say what I said to. And we know that Jeremiah did it. He said, and he said, do not be afraid of their faces while I'm with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And sometimes I even feel like that. Sometimes um, I've been up, whether it's in a classroom, whether it's been in the church, to be very honest, you know, and you go up. And if you look at people's faces, you know, sometimes it, it'll defeat you. And the idea is sometimes they might have something else on their mind. But then sometimes they might have a negative thing about you or what you're saying. But if you know that you're doing what you're supposed to do, you know, um, 
then you do what you're supposed to do. And so you can't be afraid of their faces. You know, he says, I'm with you to deliver you. You know, again, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. And just again, just going with with this part of the lesson saying, listen to me, you who know righteousness. Okay, righteousness means I'm in right standing with God. Okay, so if you're in right standing with God and, and God's law is written on your heart, then we can't fear the reproach of men, okay, or be afraid of their insults. And that goes even beyond just us with our everyday, that goes in, as we share the good news or as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, we can't be afraid of what they say. So with this coming, um, still on this idea, this is from Second Peter, the third chapter, and I, I printed a good amount of it. Um, verses three through 11, and then 14 through 15a. Because if I cut too much of it, you would lose the, um, the content and I didn't want to lose the content or the uh, concept of it. So it says, knowing this first, and this goes along with what we're just talking about, that scoffers will come in the last days. And I know some, sometimes we feel like we are truly in the last days, walking according to their own lust, okay? And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So they're smart out it, okay? And they're saying, it don't look like Jesus is coming back. It don't look like what y'all believe is true, you know? And they, they doing whatever they want to do, whatever way they want to do it, you know? Um, remember, there's a way that seems right to man and the end thereof is destruction. And that's what a lot of people, are, unfortunately, are doing today. And I'm sure they did it in the past, but we see it clearly because we have so much social media to see it. But it says, for this they willfully, verse five, for this they willfully forget that the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, but which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So what is this saying? It's going back to Noah. It's saying, those people were saying the same thing back then. They were party hardy, having a good time, looking at Noah, like, why in the world are you building an ark, you know, and living whatever that way they wanted to, according to their own lust. And then all of a sudden, it started raining. You know, it's an old song, it's going to rain. You better get ready, you know, um, bear this in mind. God showed Noah the rainbow sign, because the rainbow is God's, by the way. It won't be water but fire next time. That's how the song goes, something I sang back in college. And so the idea is that he's saying they were, in Noah's days, they were having a good old time. And then all of a sudden it started raining and then it flooded, okay? And if you weren't on the ark, you perished. So he's saying, so just like back then, now the, the heavens and the earth are being preserved now by the same word, by God's word. God is letting things God is holding the heavens and the earth together, but there is going to be a time, a day of judgment, and is reserved, you see the word, for fire. Again, it won't be water, but fire this time, this second coming, okay, for the day of judgment and the perdition of godly, ungodly men. So they can scoff if they want, and we pray for them to come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. We don't blow them off. We don't call them names, okay? We pray for them. That's what that's our responsibility. We we share the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, they might scoff, they might insult us. Okay, we keep going. We keep doing what God has called us and commissioned us um, and to do. And then it says in verse eight, but beloved, do not forget this one thing: that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Remember, we already talked about forget me not. In other words, don't forget God. God's going to do what he promised. As some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So even when we say why, is it looks like it's the last days, many days. <laughs> A lot of time we're going through stuff. And why is God waiting? Why is God waiting? Because God is long suffering. So in other words, God is patient. He doesn't want people to perish. And people say, well, God wouldn't do that to me. He's not. He's giving us a choice. And so he's holding off, even with all um, this craziness going on in the world, he's holding off, waiting for more and more and more people to be saved, to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, to repent from their sins. Okay. 
but then it's going to come. And, you know, um, there was a movie when I was a child that scared me to death that was called Thief in the Night that we watched at Sunday school. But verse 10 says, but the day the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Remember the verses we read from Isaiah 51? And the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up, okay? Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be or ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness, okay? Um, sometimes we, we live in today, but we do need to realize that this day is the day of judgment is coming and we need to live holy and we need to live righteous and we need to live godly lives. Verse 14 says, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in him, found in Christ, in peace, without spot and blemish, and excuse me, without spot and blameless, okay, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. So this goes along Again, with Isaiah, the 51st chapter, verse eight, excuse me, um, it goes along with verse eight, okay? For the malt will eat them up like a garment and the worm will eat them like wool and my righteousness will be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. And it also goes along with Isaiah, the 51st chapter, verse six, where it says, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look on the earth beneath for the heavens will vanish away like smoke. The earth will grow old like a garment and those who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever and my righteousness will not be abolished. So what can we take from Isaiah, the 51st chapter and these additional scriptures for our lesson today? So this is the summary of our lesson today. In summary, learn from Isaiah's example of God's faithfulness throughout Israel's history. We saw it with Sarah. We saw it with Abraham. And if you read on, it, it's more examples even in the rest of Isaiah 51st chapter. Second point, trust God, even when others do not believe in Jesus and speak negatively of our faith. Trust God, even when others do not believe in Jesus and speak negatively of our faith. Our third point, share the gospel. It doesn't matter that people speak negatively our responsibility, our commission, you know, we talk about the great commission, okay, is to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and God's deliverance with others, and sometimes when we're thinking about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and God's deliverance, we're thinking about those who are not saved, so then I wanted the fourth point, which is encourage one another in the Christian faith to keep the faith, encourage one another in the Christian faith to keep the faith, so we need to live in all holiness and godliness, okay? We need to encourage one another and build one another up, not tear one another down. This is our lesson for today. So again, learn from Isaiah's example of God's faithfulness throughout Israel's history. God does restore, God does deliver. Trust God, even when people speak negatively of our faith, okay? or they don't believe in Jesus, because we know Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Share the gospel. People need to know it. So if you don't know um, about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the way, and God's deliverance, and God will deliver you. And so with that in mind, just the idea that if you need to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you can pray. Um, just repeat the words um, similar to what I say, which is, um, dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I need salvation. I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. I confess my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ as the Savior and the Lord of my life. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And then everyone, for new believers or old believers, because we all feel tired sometimes, we need to encourage one another in the Christian faith to keep the faith and to keep moving forward 
and the faith. So this is our lesson for the day. Be blessed. Loving Christ, Sister Sharon.